Hey, this is Melanie Fay, and this is an R&B toolkit, just a compilation of techniques that I use extensively. Singability is important because it'll allow you to take your guitar playing to the next level in terms of expressiveness. It'll allow you to convey a certain tone or a certain feel better. So for example, instead of playing a note like this or a, a line of notes like this, you know, that was okay. It was vaguely musical, but if I can make it sing, it'll sound more like same exact notes. But with the slides and the vibrato and the hammer-ons, it was a lot more expressive. You know, or instead of that was fine. It was in tune. It it sounded okay, but with the sauce, you know, it sounded more like or something like could sound more like. So I use my whammy bar extensively because I started playing guitar because of Guitar Hero 3 and the video game controller had a whammy bar on it. So I knew I had to have a guitar with a whammy bar. There are many different whammy bar techniques. Uh, one iconic whammy bar technique is uh, Eddie Van Halen's technique. It's, it's really chaotic, it's really wild. Maybe something like, you know, the dive bombs, you know, stuff like that. But my whammy bar technique is a little bit more subtle. So I don't usually bend down towards the body. I usually pull up away from the body when I'm using my whammy bar. So it'll sound more like instead of just very subtle. And sometimes I will do it a little more dramatic, something like sounds like an effects pedal even though it's not but either way I'm not really pushing down I'm pushing up or pulling up but sometimes I do push down when I want a stutter effect like if you've ever heard like a Pharrell song there's like four stutters in the beginning or really hip-hop music will have stutters in it so for example something like something like that. So when I play chord progressions, I like to keep time with my thumb. I do that a lot. It's called a slap, thumb slap. So usually I'll do it on the two and on the four. So in a chord progression like this, or I'll do them kind of like a, like a snare hit. I'll do two on top of each other, kind of like if you've ever heard, like, like. So for example, on guitar, I'll do something like. So because I play without a pick predominantly, I like to use a lot of hammer-ons for my single note lines and for my chord embellishments. I'll do stuff like that. Pretty simple technique start 
with one finger on one fret on the same string and then tap your other finger onto the string. So you don't even have to start with a note before the hammer on. You actually can hammer on from nowhere, it's called, or at least Rick Graham calls it. Hammer on from nowhere. All I'm doing is just tapping onto the string. And you can also do this on a chord. So here I'm playing a C major seven. Well, a piece of a C major seven, I'm playing the root seven. I'm putting my index finger behind the chord so that I can hammer on my pinky. It'll sound something like that. Vibrato is extremely important. This one will make you sound like a singer. This one will allow you to convey tone in your music. Your guitar playing won't be so flat. I don't mean flat in pitch, I mean flat in tone, in timbre. You'll have much better feel when you apply vibrato correctly. So essentially, with vibrato, what I'm doing is I'm picking a note and then I'm bending downward. Some guitar players, they'll bend horizontally, side to side, and then some will bend upwards, but I'm, I'm bending down but you're not just bending the string in and out of tune because that's not really vibrato, that's just you bending the string. Vibrato is where you're kind of, you're not gripping the neck. Your thumb is above the neck. But this part of my hand isn't really, it's not really holding on to anything. And what I'm doing is I'm kind of bending my wrist in this sort of movement, like this. Like imagine if you were like opening a doorknob sort of movement. It's like that sort of movement. Now vibrato, honestly for me, one day it just clicked. Like for a long time I couldn't do it and then one day it finally clicked. So. I wouldn't get frustrated with it, just keep practicing and then one day it'll, it'll all fall into place and it'll click. Extended chords are really important because it'll allow you to take your chord progressions to an entirely different level. It gives your chords, it gives your guitar playing much more sauce and it makes your playing much more colorful. So imagine if I were to play this basic chord progression right here, F major to C major. You know, that wasn't very interesting. It sounded very beginner. But if I used F major seven and then C major seven instead, it would sound more like Something that makes guitar playing really fun are dramatic slides. <laughs> so when I think of that, it, it just makes me think of like Eddie Van Halen or, or John Mayer. I know those guitar players are nothing alike, but that's where I got the inspiration for that from. So something you could do is. You could try to slide it all the way up an octave. But sometimes I don't, I just slide it up.
Or you could start much higher and then pick into the note. Something like that. Hi, it's Melanie Fay. Welcome to my Pickup Music Masterclass. We'll be learning R&B techniques in seven days. I'm gonna teach you how to take basic chord progressions and sauce them up into singable R&B chord progressions. We'll be covering techniques such as hammer-ons, pull-offs, chord embellishments, inversions, and fast note runs. So by the end of this masterclass, you'll have much better feel, a much wider range of dynamics, and you'll be able to make your guitar sing like an R&B singer. So I encourage you to commit to all seven days. I'll be here to encourage you and help guide you through all seven. So get your membership at pickupmusic.com and start your R&B journey today.